Home Assistant's March release is here today and there is some great improvements this month, including LLM streaming, map clustering, tile card features and animations. First up though, we are starting off with some lovely dashboard updates this month to the ever improving new dashboard in Home Assistant, starting off with headers. And I have to say, I absolutely love this new feature. It's really clean and a very welcome addition. Let me show you how it works. If you head over to edit your dashboard, you will see that there is a new section here that has a title and badges. The badges we've had for a little while now, but the title is the new bit and how the badges kind of interact with the title is also new too. If you go ahead and add a title, you'll get a pop-up that lets you configure it. Firstly, you can choose to display it inside of a card so that it's kind of got that card background to it, or you can just have it as the text only with no card. Then in the content, you can add whatever you like to be displayed. And the great thing here is that it supports templates and variables, which can be used to really make this thing powerful. For example, if you want to have it show you how many lights are on or as a conditional message, if a door is left open or if the washing machine has finished its cycle, you can do that here in this title. Really useful for kind of quick glance information. Once you add the title, if we go in and add a couple of badges, which again, we've had for a little while now, but you'll see that those appear under the title. But what if you don't like that position and you want it back up at the top like they used to be? Well, you can do that if you edit the title section, you get a couple of different options to choose from. Firstly, you can set the badges to either be above or below the title, but also you can edit the layout of the header as a whole. So if you leave it in responsive, then it's going to behave in a responsive manner and kind of resize to fit different screen sizes, or you can also have it line left aligned to have the title and badges always over on the left side, or centered to appear always directly in the middle, which I do personally really like. One thing I did think was missing was just to have it right aligned also to complete the set of options. Plus for countries that read right to left, it probably makes sense. Maybe just an oversight there, but yeah, I really, really love this new header option. And it really reminds me of the header card from the mobile dashboard videos from a while back, which on the subject of, I know I've been saying it for ages, but I think this now completes the feature set that I need to kind of recreate that in the new dashboard layout. So watch out for that coming soon and leave a comment of what you'd like to see. Next up, the tile card in this release gets a lot of nice improvements, starting with tile card features, positioning of features. So we know that features in tile cards are a way of adding quick controls to cards to control a device. For example, the start button on a robot vacuum. And now these features can have their positions set by editing the card, going to features, and you will see two options for the positioning, either at the bottom of the card or in line. This in line position is pretty cool for cards that are full width or at least wider than the standard card where it can now make use of the available space. And I have to say, I really do like the little layout cards that they've made to show what the result is going to look like over the original uh, old drop down style cards. That is a nice little improvement also. Now, speaking of tile card features, there are some new features making their way into this release too. The first one being a switch toggle, which can now allow for quick toggle controls for switch entities. And the second one is for counters, which now have the increase, decrease and reset buttons right on the card. Nice. Continuing on the tile card train, the cards themselves will now have a subtle change that shows when a card has an action. In previous releases, all tile cards would have a little circle around the icon, whether they were a light that could be controlled or a sensor that had no control. But now in 2025.3, only cards that have an action will have a circle around the icon indicating that it can be controlled. And cards that have no control will of course have no circle. 
Finally, when you hover over a tile card icon, it's going to change color to indicate that it's clickable and it has an action. And also, you can now interact with tile cards by using the tab key on your keyboard. Next, Assist gets a bit of a new feature in this release too that allows the streaming of LLM responses. So in previous releases, if you were to ask OpenAI, for example, a question and the answer is kind of a longer answer, you'll notice that you wait for a considerable amount of time before the answer comes through. And then when it does come through, it just loads a full wall of text all at once. However, if you've ever used ChatGPT, for example, then you know when you ask it a question, it kind of starts loading everything word by word so that you can start reading as it's generating and it makes it feel a lot snappier, even if the end result is overall the same time to load everything. Well, in 2025.3, LLMs will now stream their response, same as ChatGPT does, so that you can immediately start getting feedback. Now, the caveat here with this is that it only works in text responses at the moment, so it doesn't work on the voice PE, for example, but I know for sure that the team does want to bring that over, and so this is a great first step in making that happen, and that will be a huge improvement to the response times for LLMs when using the voice PE, for example, when that eventually does make it over. But still, really, really cool new feature. Another new feature in this release is a map improvement, which now clusters together icons on the map that are close together. In previous releases, if you had multiple devices in the same location or kind of close by, depending on your zoom level, they would kind of just all overlap each other and not, re not really let you see what was going on. But now in 2025.3, if icons are close by, it will show you a number which indicates how many people are in that spot. And if you zoom in or zoom out a little bit, you get this really nice little animation as it kind of changes between them, which I really love. Or if you are zoomed out a bit, you can click the number on the map and it will automatically zoom you in to let you see each icon perfectly. Really nice quality of life improvement there. By the way, if you prefer the old behavior, you can toggle this grouping on or off in the top left-hand corner. Finally, for the main stuff, graphs get a couple of little improvements in this release. Firstly, you can now double-click to zoom in or zoom out on the graph to get more detail, and you can also hold Control or Command for you Mac guys on your keyboard and click and drag a time range to zoom in on that time range really snappily, which is a handy little tool. Finally, the legend will now display as many entities as it can fit, but if there are just too many entities, they will now overflow into a drop-down menu to keep things a little neater. Also, I thought this was a new feature, but I checked and it did actually exist in the last release too, so not sure when it was added. But if you enable a sensor in the legend, it will kind of do this really cool little loading animation, which I do enjoy. In fact, I do love all the little subtle animations that have been making their way into the UI over the last couple of releases. They kind of just add a really nice overall quality of life feel to the whole UI. It's just like a little bit of polish, you know? As for the little things this month, your browser will no longer need a hard refresh when Home Assistant updates in order for new UI things to work properly. It will just happen automatically, which is great news. Home Assistant will now redirect you to the device page after you finish adding an integration. There is a new toggle in the settings of a view to add a top margin to your dashboard. You can now view the ESP Home logs for a device inside of Home Assistant's logs, which is actually a really, real cool feature for capturing information that would otherwise be lost when an ESP Home device reboots or you aren't viewing them. The new OpenAI models are now supported to switch to in Assist. And finally, the SwitchBot remote is now supported with the SwitchBot integration. In terms of new integrations this month, we see six new integrations in this release, including a new backup integration to Azure, but also WebDAV, which is cool to see, along with a couple of new device integrations, including PG Labs devices, which look pretty neat. And in terms of breaking changes, we see a tiny list this month with just seven entries, most of which are previously deprecated stuff. The only thing I would, would draw your attention to is the SmartThings integration, which has had a bit of a bigger change in this release, 
because the SmartThings integration had to be completely rewritten since Samsung broke it in the last release. So just be aware of the SmartThings integration when you update in this release. And that's about it for this release. A nice update this month. Really a big fan of all the new dashboard stuff, which is looking amazing now. I also really love the ESP Home Logs one. I know I just touched on that briefly, but as someone who loves ESP Home devices, of course, that is a big game changer for me personally. Do let me know your favorite feature down in the comments as always. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you, oh, drop this video a like, get subscribed, and I will see you in the next video. Yeah. <laughs>